Hello Unreal Engine designers and developers. In our continuing Arctic Forest series, we're going to create the air crash site. I'm going to split this over two videos. In this video, we'll find the plane on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. We'll customize it and put it in our scene. And we'll also use Niagara Fluid Simulations to create the jet engine fire. Um, in the next episode, I will do the snowstorm and the decal footprints. So let's get straight into it. Right, we're going to start off by getting our aircraft to place in the scene. So if you go to the Unreal Engine Marketplace and go into the free, permanently free collection, and you should be able to find this commercial long range aircraft, which is free. So go into that and you might have to click on uh, buy or download first um, and once you've done that click on add to project and we'll add it to our arctic air crash so shouldn't take too long to do that uh, might take a little bit longer than that for you when it downloads it first so if you go now back to the project go into your content browser and you should now have a commercial plane folder and within that within the blueprints there is the blueprint commercial plane so in terms of placing it um, if I just uh, dismiss that for a second we created this lake here and we've got forests in adjoining valleys so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place the the plane that's crashed on this ridge between the lake and the next forest so let's zoom in a bit more over onto the, this side of the ridge. And in the previous episode, I used physics to scatter props around. For this particular um, aircraft, I'm going to just place it manually. That way, I'm not worried if it's slightly uh, buried in the sand, uh, snow, I should say. So let's go back to our commercial plane blueprint and drag it in and we'll place it sort of about here. See, and then if you uh, hit the space bar, it'll, ro it'll go between the uh, move, rotate and scale tools. So let's get the rotate tool first and just rotate it round. So it's sort of facing along the ridge, maybe down a bit like that. Let's just move around. Yeah, let's rotate it around a bit more. That's not far off what I want. What I'll do is I'll just tilt it a bit. And now I'm going to move it along a bit. So if I escape out, that's, that's not far off where I want it to be. You might want to just take a bit more time so you can see the left engine slightly buried in the snow, um, but I can see the wheels here are sort of resting against the ground and these ones are slightly buried. So that's that's pretty good. Let's use that as the, uh, the, the point we want. Um, I'm going to put a bookmark here. So if I use control two, that means that if I, even if I move around somewhere else in the scene, I can press two and come back to that. OK, now, now we've got our plane in the scene, we can play around with some of the features of this plane. So things like the the look of it and also it has some parts that you can uh, move as well. So you can have things like the the ailerons and the um, undercarriage move and you can even have the engines spinning as well. So let's select the plane in the outliner and if you look um, in the details below, you can see there's all these, let's um, drag it up so you can see a bit more. You've got all these options here for spin, front gear, doors, etc. So let's um, change some of these. So for example, let's change the left engine spin to 0.2. And now if we go into simulation mode by pressing Alt S. After a couple of seconds, you can see that that engine if I move down a bit, 
you can see that engine is rotating so um, that's the sort of thing you can do you can play around with this as you want um, I might change some of the other things as well here the outer flaps here if I put that to one don't know if you can see if I you can see that these inner flaps are horizontal and the outer flaps have moved down slightly so you can play around to get what you want the other thing you can do here is you can change the livery of the plane as well so if we go further down in the details section you've got the opportunity to do change the carrier livery so at the moment it's blank so i used uh, this pan atlantic airlines or pan atlantic airways livery which is quite nice and you can also do custom colors as well so uh, what I could do is select the custom color box here and what I'll do is I'll make most of these colors white and in fact the third one here is the color of the the top of the plane so what I'll do is I'll go back into that and I will just make it slightly blue, maybe slightly more than that. And it's maybe slightly darker as well. So I'm getting that sort of moody, um, sort of Arctic feel as well in the plane color. So click OK. And now I've got the plane there with some customization and I'm ready to add a fire to my jet engine. So what we'll do next is we'll use Niagara fluid simulation this time to create a fire and the smoke coming out of the engine. So for our jet engine fire and smoke, we're gonna use Niagara fluid simulation. So the first thing we need to do is enable that within the project. So go into the um, edit plugins and search for Niagara and what you'll want is Niagara fluids. So if you select that and say yes, you'll need to restart. So it'll take a few seconds to do that. So I'll uh, meet you back in here in 30 seconds or so. Okay, and once your project is restarted, we will go into the content browser. Let's create a new folder for this effect. Uh, so new folder, which we'll call FX open that up and then right click and under effects we'll create a new Niagara system and you want to create a new system from a template you'll see now we've enabled the Niagara fluid sims as a whole host of new templates here for 2d and 3d fluid sims so if you go down to the 3d gas and smoke you can see this looks like what we want to achieve so we've got a bit of fire here and then the smoke plume so click on that click on finish and let's call it ns underscore engine fire okay so what we can do now is we can drag this onto the scene and you'll probably find that it places it sort of in the background a bit more so let's just drag it around we get it roughly into place and we want to do some rotation here so uh, the easiest way to do this is probably just to do it within the rotation numbers so I want to rotate it 180 degrees on the z-axis and 90 on the y actually minus 90 I think yeah so it's now coming out at the bottom of this cube here so if we drag it up and into place roughly you'll have to rotate around a little bit to see exactly where it is and something else you'll notice is that the smoke is continuing continually building up so we probably can reduce the time of the simulation and we need to make sure it loops as well so back down here that's roughly in the right place and then actually let's make the rotation 170 yeah so you can see it's sort of starting 
there. So there's a couple of things I've noticed here. First of all, the smoke is so dense that it's sort of flattening at the side of the boundaries. And of course, it's building up all the way up to the top and flattening there as well. So we can do a few things about that. So let's um, come back to our Niagara simulation. If you open it up, um, let's just zoom in a bit to see it. So we've got a, the way it works here is you've got a couple of nodes here. Let's move them around here so you can see what's going on. You've got the um, system spawner here, and then this is the part that does the uh, fluid simulation, this grid the 3D gas controls. So what we can do first of all in the main overview node is if you come down to the bottom here, rather than have this loop just once, we want it to loop infinitely. And then let's make the loop duration 20 seconds so it doesn't build up quite as much. Okay. And the other thing we can do here as well is let's go back to the so you can see here that it's um it's still flattening out at the top here and it's still going up to the top so first thing we'll do is we'll reduce the um the dissipation density dissipation of this so that it actually the smoke uh disappears before it reaches these top boundaries so come back to your main grid 3d gas controls and in the simulation, you've got these various different parameters here. You can play around with these, um, but this density dissipation, which is 0 0.05, if we up this tenfold to 0 0.5, what it'll do is it will dissipate, it, the smoke will dissipate quicker. So click the save on that. If we come back here, what you'll notice is that the smoke is only going up a little bit before it uh, disappears so it's not reaching the top and flattening out but we still do have a little bit of a problem on this side the side nearest the camera because it's going straight up so what we can do is we can adjust the gravity of the smoke maybe to push it out um, towards the front of the plane a bit so go back to the Niagara controls and you can see here in gravity, we've got a negative 980 on the Z axis. That's why the smoke is going up. What we can also do is we could make it, let's say minus 500, I think on the Y axis to push it out towards the plane nose. And if I save that, it's pushing it towards the front of the plane. Just have to maybe move it around slightly. Um, if you don't want to see this, this sort of red boundaries um, while you're dealing with it, I believe there's a setting somewhere in here for show boundaries. Let's have a look. Let's see if I can find it. Show overlays. If you get rid of that and if you press also while you're in the viewport, press G, you can see that it gets rid of all of the widgets. So this is actually not far off. What I'll do is I'll just move it around slightly a bit more down here, down there. And obviously we need to move it into the engine a bit more. Again, you can take your time with this. And you'll notice if we go into simulation mode, let's do Alt-S. You can see now the engine is spinning around as well. So that adds to the effect of the engine still running and the smoke coming out. You can play around with that sort of gravity view. It's, it's coming out at a slight angle here because of the 170 degree rotation we did. But uh, you can always play around with those X and Y gravities to get the smoke direction you want. And the only other thing to be aware of with this um, these fluid simulations is they're they take up a lot more performance. So if I go into the frame rate at the moment, you can see that the frame rate here is sort of round about the well, it's, it's it's changing between sort of 20 and 30, which is pretty low and up to 45. It's it's erratic. 
what you can do here is there is a resolution max access uh, parameter on the in fact let's come out of the simulation first so you can uh, so we can change it on the um, Niagara system there's this resolution max access that's the um, the quality of the uh, simulation so if I or rather the resolution quality so if I reduce that by half so look at this at the moment it's about 50 frames per second if I reduce it to one to eight you can see that the frames per second has jumped up from 50 to sort of 75 76 but that the smoke looks a little bit more pixelated so just be aware that um, there's a trade-off between the resolution quality and the frame rate so 256 was kind of a good intermediate ground here now if you're doing if you're using this in cinematic sequences by all means put the resolution max axis up but don't put it up too much because once you get over about 500 the system gets exponentially slower down to sort of one frame per second and you might find your system quite unresponsive so um, that's probably all we'll do on this all I would say is if you are thinking of using this in a uh, sequencer you know sort of a, a film sequence uh, mode then by all means use this Niagara fluid simulation because it, with the resolution max axis up a bit it looks great but if you are uh, thinking of using it in a game you might want to just use the the same fire that we used for our campfire simulation in the previous video um, and that way your frame rate will go drastically up and you won't notice any sort of stuttering in your game so just be aware of that and um, in the next episode we'll finish off the air crash scene by uh, doing a snow localized snowstorm we'll have some decals for footprints snow snowy footprints leading away from the plane and probably we'll add in a few rocks around here as well so that it doesn't look quite so stark around this site so i will see you in the next one bye for now